scribblinggrace.com. Today I'm doing what I guess I'll call a acrylic garden pathway <laughs> painting. Um, it's kind of like an overgrown garden path. That's kind of what I was going for. So here I am just sketching out the pathway. Um, I kind I did a curvy pathway. Um, so and I'm kind of sketching out the trees and bushes, um, just kind of giving myself a vague idea of what I'm going to do. I end up not doing any of the trees. Um, so in this video, you'll get to see me really troubleshoot and uh, go through my whole process of changing things up as we go along. So I'm um, painting the pathway. I have a couple different browns, territorial beige and burnt umber and antique white. And I'm just kind of picking up um, both those browns, adding a little bit of white in there and just painting it, um, painting this pathway. So kind of going back and forth between the darker brown and the lighter brown so that I can have a little bit of different tones in there for that pathway, give it a little bit of um, character and depth to it. So um, for the pathway, you want to make sure that you want the this part of the path that is closest to you or the bottom of the page to be bigger and then you know as it goes farther away it is going to get smaller so that gives you that um, you know depth of the painting that look of the pathway going out into the distance so um, I am going to be grabbing some greens now and I also have some pinks so I'll add some yellow um, and pink flowers I guess you could say <laughs> in a little bit as well, so I'm just getting all those paints out. I will um, put the names of all the paint colors that I use in the description of this video, and I'll also put links to all the supplies that I use as well, so um, be sure to check out the description for all that fun stuff. So I'm still using this same flat paintbrush that I was using to paint the pathway. I'm going to use the same small flat paintbrush for this whole page. I think this was a quarter inch flat paintbrush. Um, and here I am, I started adding these bushes and then I realized that I was going to have a bunch of white spaces in between them and I didn't want that. So then I decided to go ahead and paint a whole green background around that pathway that will help um, to cover up all those white spaces, you know, so that it looks like a really nice and super full luscious uh, garden-y path. Maybe garden. I don't even know if garden is the right word. It could be a very wildernessy path with some flowers. <laughs> um, I hope, you know, you can see it and kind of make your own assumptions on it. I thought it was pretty, whatever it is. <laughs> so, um, so again, I'm just kind of painting around. Um, I paint around these edges on the opposite side as well in this Bible. I try to always carry that painting onto the opposite side as well, just because I think it looks nice to have it finished, but that's optional. Um, this painting may be a little bit more advanced than most of my tutorials, but I did get asked to do throw in some harder tutorials in there as well. So um, this one's a little bit harder, but still it's, you know, my whole thing is always just get the paint on the page. So um, I don't, I'm not doing this super like trying to create the perfect actual, you know, realistic bushes or anything like that. Um, I'm just trying to give the idea of bushes and flowers and stuff. So I also did this tree. And later I decided that I did not like the tree at all. I was going to do trees in the background too, like past the pathway, the top of the page. Um, but I just was not loving it. So you'll see me paint over that <laughs> in a little bit. Meanwhile, I'm going to continue painting bushes, just going back and forth between my different green colors. I also mixed in a little bit of those browns into the greens too, so that I have a whole bunch of different shades. So I have the green straight out of the tube, which are brighter, and then adding the brown kind of gives me some duller, um, darker or lighter greens too. So um, you get all those different tones, which makes it really fun, I think. And the whole, here's real time. So I'm going... You can see I move pretty fast, um, and I'm just swiping that paintbrush on making these little strokes in bunches, kind of doing a half circle shape, um, but leaving it really organic, I guess. And you can see I'm also kind of twisting my brush. So some strokes are more thicker because they're more like a horizontal. Um, my paintbrush was being held horizontally, or they were thinner because my paintbrush was being held vertically. So that'll give me a thinner stroke. Um, rather than the flat part of the paintbrush that'll give me a thick stroke. So I get a whole variation of those different strokes with this flat paintbrush as well. Here I just uh, picked up more of that white because I felt like I needed um, some lightness in there too. 
trying to go back and forth between those greens and keeping them all in little bunches so that you can see that they're all different plants or all different bushes. I'm also adding in um, some flowers, quote unquote, um, but they're really just, again, just me pushing the paintbrush down onto the page to create kind of a bud shape more than a flower shape, but you get the idea that they're flowers. Um, I'm using, I used yellow and you can barely see the yellow because yellow is a very um, translucent color with acrylic paints, so um, they are kind of harder to see. So you either have to do a bunch of layers or what I end up doing, add a little bit of that antique white or just a straight white and that will um, make your yellow a little bit more opaque and a little lighter and brighter too so it'll stand out better. So you'll see me add um, the brighter yellow in just a little bit as well. So I painted over that tree that I didn't like and I'm just going to add the bushes over it and I kind of just did away with the whole tree idea. The trees were what was going to make it more like a garden, but um, we don't need that. So um, I am working on um, Proverbs 3, mainly verses 5 through 6, which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. So, um, especially with this verse, you could totally do a straight pathway, <laughs> you know, that would make sense, but I do find that the curvy paths um, tend to look a little bit better, but you could totally do it straight too, that goes well with the verse, um, that nice classic Proverbs verse, such a good one. So here I am just continuing to add those bushes all around the page from at the top and the bottom. One thing... Um, to note is that if you wanted to make this even more realistic, you would kind of stick like with what you were doing with the pathway, where at the bottom you make the bushes bigger, um, and then at the top, where it's supposed to be a little farther away, make those bushes smaller. I didn't really do that here. I'm not a professional artist, I'm just a Bible journaler, so I just kind of felt like, you know, getting the paint on there, and <laughs> I feel like it still looks really pretty, and I don't, I don't need to have it crazy, super duper realistic. To have a really pretty page so um, <laughs> uh, I'm continuing just adding some more of those little flowers you can see I do have some open spaces where I don't have those bushes too because you don't want it to look crazy busy it still is kind of a busy page but I kind of love it it does definitely look overgrown um, here I am adding I added that white to the yellow and whoa doesn't that make a difference it just really makes that pop and I love it um, but yeah, it does look really overgrown, whatever it is, <laughs> maybe a garden pathway or a forest pathway. Um, I'm drying this off with my heat gun. One thing to keep in mind when you're using acrylic paints in your journaling Bible is that you, with any project you do, I always encourage you putting a piece of printer paper or some kind of something underneath the page that you're working on. So I just use printer paper. Um, but, especially with acrylics, if you get the paint on the edge, um, if, you know, on those two pages, they can really stick together. So you have to be careful to remember to pull those pages apart um, before it completely dries. Because once it completely dries, it does get, uh, can get really tricky to pull them apart because they get all stuck. Um, but if you lift it up before it fully dries, it usually um, is totally fine. So... <laughs> Just a helpful note there. So I am going to add my lettering now. And I was really um, meditating on the whole chapter of Proverbs 3. But um, I am going to write out, you know, the classic 5 through 6, which I read out earlier. Um, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. So I am using my Unaposca paint pen, my white paint pen. This is the 1M tip so um, it's like a fine tip um, and I'm just gonna do normal cursive I'm gonna do go over it again um, just because I find these paint pens do look best if you go over the lettering twice it makes them really opaque and stand out a little bit better um, and this paint pen was a little bit old so it's giving me a, um, a little more hassle than they normally do but I love these paint pens I get asked about them a lot and I get asked about acrylics a lot so I just want to touch on that as well so um, these paint pens are great, but they do bleed through an unprepared Bible journaling page. And, um, commonly in Bible journaling, you'll hear about gesso and gesso is typically used, um, to prep a page. You paint it on your page and then you can use whatever, 
um, inks or paints or whatever you want to use on top of it and it'll keep it from bleeding through. So um, these paint pens I do recommend using um, on top of some kind of page prep. The thing is that gesso is a form of acrylic paint. And acrylic paints are awesome because they act as a page prep. So <laughs> um, you don't need to buy gesso if you have acrylic paints. Um, clear gesso is nice to have if you uh, like that kind of stuff. But I personally never prep my page with gesso. Um, I use my watercolors that I always know never bleed through. I will, um, you'll see my supplies links and stuff in the description below. So, um, for all those supplies that I love to use, but every supply that I use, I know won't bleed through other than these pens. I know that they bleed through, but I only use these, um, paint pens on top of acrylic paints, which keeps them from bleeding. So it's perfect. And acrylic paints acrylic paints are totally safe to use in your Bible and they don't bleed through either. Um, I use my cheapo apple barrel paints from Walmart. They're like, I get them for like 50 cents at my Walmart, but, um, so I love them and they're cheap and easy, <laughs> but you could totally use whatever acrylic paint brand you want. Um, I do recommend trying to find a matte acrylic rather than a glossy finish because those can um, make your page a little sticky and make the pages stick together. So matte is the best way to go, but acrylic paints are totally safe to use. So um, again, here I am just going back over my cursive a second time just to make it nice and opaque and um, make that lettering stand out. I also always write out a prayer for my son in this Bible. So that's at the bottom and a little D as well. And um, that is it for my page. So I know that I went through this fairly quickly. Um, I hope that you kind of get the idea. The big thing I just want to get across is just enjoy the process and spending time in the word. And a page like this is so fun because you really can just be messy with it. Just get the paint out on those blobs on the page. That's all it is. I just dabbed my brush all around the page in different colors and it turned out like a little garden. So um, it may look complicated, but it really wasn't. So I hope that you'll give this a shot. And of course, this is the Interleave Bible, which has a full blank pages. If you don't have this Bible, you could make a tip in, which I will put my tutorial link to in the description. Or you could also just scale this down to the margin of your Bible that you do have, or do it completely outside of your Bible if you so please. So lots of options. I hope that this helps and inspires you. All right. Much love. Many blessings. Bye.